Hey, everybody. This is Heidi St. John. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. We're heading into the new year, and we're going to start it off right today with Dr. Mark Sherwood from the Functional Medicine Institute in Oklahoma. He is here today to answer listener questions. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to get encouragement into the new year. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, everybody. Well, wherever you are, thank you guys so much for sending your cards and letters to me here at Firmly Planted Family. And I'm still getting those things in the mail. I still love to hear from you. You can write to me, HeidiStJohn.com, Care Firmly Planted Family, 14001 Southeast 1st Street, Vancouver, Washington, 98684. We love hearing from you and hearing what God is doing. And I know that Dr. Mark Sherwood's been a huge part of that as we are reflecting on the last year of episodes here at the podcast, and we're coming up on making some new ones for the new year, and and uh, just cannot wait to see what God's going to do. Also, Dr. Mark and I have been talking about getting him out here to the Homeschool Resource Center and uh, doing an event together, so we're looking forward to that. Dr. Mark, my friend, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's good to be here, and hopefully you had a wonderful Christmas. I know we did. Well, I'm telling you what, I feel like Christmas is just gives us an opportunity to yeah. just sort of get off the crazy train for a minute and really take stock of the good things that the Lord has given us. And as much as things are crazy, and you and I talk about this a lot, you know, we're living in kind of bizarre upside down times. Mm -hmm. The Lord is still on his throne and God's doing good things here in the United States and around the world. Yes. And I was thinking about Christmas recently, you know, of course, this time of year makes you do a lot of introspective Yep. Reflection, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, it and does. I was yeah. thinking the, you know, the wise men brought gifts to yeah. Jesus. They brought gifts to Jesus. What should we be doing this time of year and this season and even really all year? We should be bringing gifts to the Father. We should mm -hmm. be doing that because we should show gratitude. And that gift that we can give is our time and attention. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's the greatest thing that we can really begin to give is time and attention and get our minds and hearts in the right place. Yep, I agree. And uh, no better way to get to uh, get off on the right foot than by being in the Word of God. You know that yeah. the month of January, I, I lead a women's Bible study. We're going through the book of Esther. Yay. And every time I read that, I'm just like, wow. I mean, the Lord shows me something different. God's Word is new. The Bible says it's alive mm -hmm. and active. Every time we read it, it's God's going to show us new truth for the journey mm -hmm. uh, that we're on. And as you and I have said, you know, multiple times here, you know, over the months at the show, the world might be in crisis, but God's people don't need to be. And uh, no. we can have peace in the middle of whatever's happening around us. I think back to that scripture, Jesus in the boat. It's storming and disciples are all freaked out and yeah. scared and anxious, thinking they're going to die. And he's sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Now, we, we don't need to be sleeping in the middle of this time. I don't say no. that, but we need to be really confident to know that we are here at such a time as this yeah. to use a line from Esther. But we're here right now for a reason. We yeah. God plucked us out of eternity to put us right here, right now at this time. And I get the honor in the present time of being on the Off the Bench podcast with Heidi and get the honor of talking to people directly with their questions. See, this is how we must embrace the present, right? And don't look at the mess around us that is crazy and wonky. I mean, we need to be aware of it, but not beware of it. You know, you see, That's there's good. a difference in the perspective, perspective we need to have. Yeah, it's really good. And I, I appreciate you coming on. You ready to jump into some questions? I am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Kathy in California says that both of her daughters have developed asthma. What's the best way to prevent a flare up? And is it possible to be completely healed from asthma? Well, yeah, uh, I think, uh, Kathy, right, that's just a big deal. Um, yes, asthma has been recently researched as being a condition of inflammation. Did you know that? Um, I believe, and I've seen it before, God does heal. He's still in the instantaneous uh, curative miracle. He's still in the restora restorative miracles. He's also in the miracles of us doing stuff, right? And so right. I think that in this case, what you should do is embrace the idea of healing and embrace the idea. It seemed like a broken record. Go back to anti-inflammatory eating, of course, and bring the inflammation down and bring up your omega-3s, your vitamin D, the basic things we need to sort of tone down this inflammatory process. For the asthma, this is going to sound a little crazy, but I'm going to suggest you even consider looking at the therapy of breathing in and even drinking in 
hydrogen infused water and hydrogen infused air. And this is a brand new science that's really kind of mainstream over in Japan and Korea. But you can get a machine that is going to have a cannula in it, and you can actually breathe in that hydrogen air, and it can bring healing to your lungs and Are healing you to your bronchial me? tubes. Crazy. Pretty cool stuff. I have never heard of this. Mm-hmm. How does it, I mean, how does it bring healing to uh, to the lungs? Well, this is crazy. So hydrogen is the smallest molecule known to mankind, right? It's in the upper left corner of the periodic table. It has one proton, one electron, one neutron. It's a one, right? That's why it's one. Well, it's so small, it can cross every barrier of the body. It's a part of every bit of matter. And so when the water and or air carries the hydrogen, it comes into the body and it is the only molecule that can actually quench all excessive free radicals, which are a sign of aging, a sign of inflammation. So by default, when you quench the free radicals, you also relieve the burden of excessive inflammation. All disease processes have within their context and components chronic systemic inflammation. inflammation. So yep, yep. it's really a reasonable approach. I mean, it's really a upstream kind of a novel system situation. And I, I actually uh, do that myself. And I've been playing with that strategy for a while. And I think it's got a lot of um, potential to it. Where do you it. find uh, hydrogen water? That's so interesting. Pe- yeah, people can reach out to us if they want. We've got little portable bottles that I actually imported from um, Korea. And uh, I'll, I'll send you one. You can yeah, have it, yeah, play with yeah. it. And it's neat, you know. And then I've got a machine that you can also get that has a little, it's called a cannula. You can actually put a little thing in your nose and breathe it. You know, it's kind of no a cool kidding. thing. But the science is really robust out there. So, you know, for our, our listener, you know, reach out to us seriously at Sherwood.tv forward slash hottie. And we'll direct you there and, and you can use it too. And it one thing about it is it's not going to hurt anything. It's going to provide no. some benefit. I just think that's I think that's fascinating. A long yeah. time ago, uh, in my so in my family, inflammation's been a huge deal. I mean, we mm-hmm. just deal with chronic inflammation, and it it affects so many aspects of our bodies. Right? I mean, obviously, it can affect the lungs, but for goodness' sake, I mean, inflammation is the culprit, right? Totally. That we weren't totally. talking about for a long, long time, and so I just I'm uh, I'm just really fascinated by this. This kind of goes to taking this to a different level. But Amanda in Maine said she would love to know your recommendations for low lowering high LDL cholesterol. She's trying to help her husband get back on track with his health in 2024. All right, Amanda, this is a big discussion because LDL, low density lipoprotein, is a carrier of cholesterol. So cholesterol is the wax and the, this waxy fatty substance is not water soluble. So it actually hitches a ride with LDL. Key point to understand. So LDL carrying cholesterol has purposes. Cholesterol is the backbone or the foundational beginnings of all hormones, including vitamin D uh, and all of your sex steroid hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estradiol, et cetera, cortisol even too, right? And so we've got to understand what's causing the elevation of LDL. Many times as ladies get into this idea of perimenopause and menopause, the brain doesn't realize that the ovaries aren't listening and it continues to send the signal to say, produce, produce. And so what happens is at that time of of life, and this might be happening to you, LDL begins to come up and people tend to freak out. And then they tend to say, well, let's lower it with a statin drug. But that's not wisdom because doing that assumes that there's a problem with it. If you assume there's a problem and you lower with statin drugs, you actually increase the risk of potential Alzheimer's dementia because the brain needs cholesterol. So there's all kinds of connectivity. So I wouldn't suggest just looking at this from the standpoint, Amanda, of just trying to lower it. But I would want to understand a couple of things. Why is it elevating? Where are you are in life? And the most important part of this equation is, is it becoming damaged? Damaged molecules become small. Those are the ones that can really build themselves up in the vessel wall and creating plaque. Large molecules are no problem. So think about it like this. Big molecules, no problem. Small molecules, big problems. So you got to know the difference. And so I recommend if you're concerned about it, get with uh, a practitioner. You can get with us if you want to, of course, and we can test the sizes of those particles, which gives you the data you need to make the informed decision and initiate the proper strategy. 
That's amazing. That's the first time I have ever heard that. And uh, I've been battling uh, high LDL my entire life. So I love that. I love it. I love this. Uh, this is so encouraging today. And I'm curious, here's another person. This uh, this woman came uh, to us from YouTube and we did a an episode quite some time ago called You Can Actually Thrive During Menopause, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I love that we gave some people hope there. But she says, where do I go to see about bioidentical hormones? I went to my OBGYN. They put me on birth control and that only made things worse. Mm-hmm. I've tried wild yam progesterone and that also made my body go haywire. Listen, yeah. you know, ladies, we can just take a moment of silence here and say, it is <laughs> rough to be a girl. It is. I'm sorry, but we yeah. are complicated from sun up to sundown, and uh, and it's and she's not alone, is she? She's not. And uh, for years, probably a decade, I was the only guy in our office, and uh, <laughs> thankfully, I got a I got a workmate now named Jacob. I think you might have talked to him a time or two. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, he. I became an expert in estrogen dominance. Let me just tell you that, right? And I can tell you, and this is this is the beauty of ladies. The complexity of ladies is confusing, but it also allows that lady like a Rubik's cube. You know, you have so many different facets to you that yep. that make ladies more um, intriguing, more interesting, and more emotional, more bonding, more caring. There's just more there. And again, on one hand, it's like, wow, what am I dealing with? And on the second <laughs> hand, it's like, there's a lot of beauty there. God yeah. did a great thing when he made he, ladies for me. He did. Um, That's right. Yeah. Amen. Having said that, you can thrive during and even before menopause. It's important to know that it's not a death sentence. Now, when you look at hormone replacement, this is really important. Look away from these synthetic hormones, such as the ones you mentioned. They do have some safety profiles that are not positive. They really do. Look away from those and look more towards the bioidentical, which have safety profiles that are actually really enticing. And the data is pretty clear on this. With bioidentical hormones, the earlier you start, the more benefits they provide. You're actually trying to replace the hormone signaling molecules so that they're acting more youthful. That's it. That's all they're doing. They're not about weight loss drugs. or They're about protection. That's all they're about, right? That's kind of the way you have to look at it. It is challenging to find a practitioner that thinks like that, but there are some out there. And, of course, you can reach out to us, yes, but you can also maybe get uh, online and do a search in your area for bioidentical hormones. And my suggestion for you is to interview the prospective um, clinician that's going to help you get through this. So good, yeah. Ask the questions, right? Why wouldn't we do that? Yeah, what I don't kind know. Of, what kind of questions should you ask if you, if you're going to interview some, someone? Mm-hmm. What what's what? How what are some good questions to ask? I would say, tell me your philosophy on disease first of all, because that's going to be a trap question. That's going to tell you how they're going to think. Mm-hmm. If you get into hormones, tell me, doctor, why I would consider hormones. Give me data. Give me resources that are going to back up what you're saying. And I'm going to actually ask the doctor further questions. Can I actually speak with some of your staff? Mm -hmm. And hopefully they've used hormones. Mm -hmm. You see, and and you really want to kind of ask the question, and do you have testimonials on your website? Um, Do you have real life stories? And and those are obviously some key questions to ask. Man, it's so important. I think if we, uh, if we would have the courage to do that, because really, I mean, you know, I've talked about this before, but with all the vaccination, you know, hoopla and the pressure that especially mothers feel right now, it's almost like we go to the doctor and we feel like we, you know, they are, uh, we're working for them, not the other way around, No, but we really need to start changing the flipping the scripts. And so I love that you said that, man, we should be interviewing these guys, find out what their philosophy is because it absolutely matters. Some of these guys are just basically working for the pharmaceutical companies. And we want to find doctors yeah. who are going to get to the root cause of illness and disease and treat the root, not just throw a bunch of pharmaceuticals at it. It is critical to understand that there is some brilliance in medicine. There is some benefit there. We need to really understand that. However, as we talked about in previous shows, the um, mistrust has been earned because yeah. there's not been an embracing of a holistic philosophy about healing. You know, they there's one side that sort of poo-poos everything of the more natural or more traditional side says, and, and we try to embrace both. 
And when you embrace the best of both worlds, you understand in the wisdom side of things that God makes everything. And in everything, there's potential for negative. Mm -hmm. There's potential for misuse. There's also potential for blessing. And so we need to sort through this like um, the weeds versus the, the wheat and find out where the blessings are. And a clinician that actually understands that should be able to articulate that to you and, and should not, not hesitate to do so. Yes. That's it. They should they should embrace that. Yeah, they shouldn't feel threatened by the fact that you've asked them. Mm. They should be like, oh, good. Someone's actually interested in why I do what I do. A good clinician's going to welcome yeah. those questions and not run away from them. I could not agree more. Julia in Ohio says she loves the show. Thank you, Julia. She wants mm. to know, Dr. Mark, what is the name of the night cream that you recommended that your wife uses? I thought you said you used oh it gosh. too. I do. That's you know, what now, I I'm not as pretty as my wife. My <laughs> wife is is beautiful. I call her not just my spare rib, but she's my perfectly glazed braised prime rib. <laughs> Guys use that one sometimes. <laughs> Ladies, encourage your husband to, to do that for you, right? Here's the thing. That cream, Julia, is known as the... Uh, the peptide that brings about healing to the collagen structures in your face. It's called GHK copper, shortened GHK-CU. I think without hesitation that every person listening right now should be on that because I, and not, not just ladies, but men, because it actually is a much better cream to put on at night than some of the stuff that we're getting out there. Mm-hmm. And not only is it better, it's actually healthy and it's actually cheaper because some of the stuff we're putting out there has a lot of these toxins in it, these estrogenic compounds oh, it's so true. that yeah. are not good yeah, for you. So true. Don't do that. This is perfect. Yep. I love it. All right. So they can reach out to you at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. And I need to try that too. I don't think I've done that yet. Yeah. That's something. That is something I definitely uh, am going to follow up with you on as well. All right. This is really interesting. And I think we're going to end with this one today. Krista in North Carolina. Uh, This is so fascinating. I am a homeschooling mom and a registered nurse. I work one to two night shifts a week that I enjoy Uh, And I enjoy that more than working during the day because I can spend so much more time with my family. I hear so much about how the night shift is horrible for you and is actually considered a carcinogen. How do I prioritize sleep? I, she says she's doing this. I do prioritize sleep before and after work, but what are your thoughts? Can I stay healthy on the night shift or should I consider switching shifts? Well, Krista, first of all, I want to thank you again for being a homeschool mom. And yep. Thank you so much for your National service. National hero, Krista. Yes. Yeah, I, We're golf clapping for you second right Second that now. motion. Hats off to Hats you. Off. I guarantee you. But the thing is with you, Krista, um, I actually, in my previous career years and years ago, worked night shift as a police officer. And I can tell you that data is clear, and you can find this in on PubMed stuff about the uh, night shift people have higher risk patterns for these common disease processes. And it makes sense because we're really living in a time awake when we should be sleeping Mm -hmm. with awakeness, if you will, with artificial light. Yeah, you're not a nocturnal creature. No. Here's a couple of tips for you, though, I want you to catch. When you get on your, your time at home, try your best to get back on a regular schedule, even if it pains you. You know, when you go to sleep, don't hesitate to take melatonin and try to combat that even artificially so and turn that circadian rhythm upside down in your favor. You need to sleep in a room, if you're a day sleeper at all, with blackout curtains and a blindfold and earplugs, and you've got to simulate nighttime as best you can. If you can do that, Krista, you can actually overcome a lot of that stuff. And I encourage you to start tracking your sleep Don't be afraid of taking naps because naps can actually help make up for those areas that show you the cycles of sleep you might be missing. So if you don't get through the four cycles of sleep appropriately, a nap will actually help. Man, uh, I I think about this, you know, a lot because moms who are up with uh, little babies at night and stuff who don't end up getting a lot of sleep, it messes you up. It really, really Uh, does. 
Anna, I, my yeah. heart goes out to you, Krista, but man, look, I love her heart because she's on here going, mm. listen, I just want to spend more time with my kids. She's a homeschool oh, mom. Beautiful. It's so great. It's, uh, it's really encouraging. All right. Looks like I am, uh, I am out of time for today and man, we've still got some other ones on here. We'll come back again. <laughs> and, uh, if people want to reach out to us, they can do that by going to Heidi St. John.com forward slash mailbox Monday. We love to take your questions and, uh, Dr. Mark and I have a hoot and holler and good time oh, yeah. uh, going through them and, and, uh, and, uh, answering them. Mark Sherwood, you are just a delight to have on the show. One of my favorite people. We do this over and over again for a reason. It's because I really think you're bringing a lot of hope and healing to the listeners of the Heidi St. John podcast. And I just so appreciate it. I can't wait to see what God does with you in the new year, you and and, uh, and your wife, Dr. Michelle, you guys aren't sitting around letting grass grow under your feet. You got lots of things going on, don't you? We do. And and we all need to be about doing stuff. You know, I figure that faith without works is dead. Let's translate it. We need to be doers of the word and not just talkers about it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I, I like to get out of here and realize that during our time on life, the dash that we live, man, we can really do something. And it doesn't, mean if we're going to be on a podcast it, it, it might mean just you know going down to the local walmart and just greeting the greeter yeah and saying you appreciate them yeah. i mean it's it's this little thing so i just yeah we're busy and we're excited about helping people in 2024 yeah right here and uh, we're excited about that and what the lord holds and again we were talking before we went live the the words that we have for 2024 and and one of mine was was really trying to reconnect. Yeah. I think that's really a big a big word. Yeah, it really is. Uh, my my word for twenty twenty four is shine. Actually, we'd love to hear uh, you guys' words for that. If you can, yeah, you can reach out to awesome. me. In fact, I think I might put that on the Spotify poll for today. So hop on over to Spotify, uh, and I'm going to ask you what is your word for twenty twenty four. What's the Lord laying on your heart? Uh, the Bible says that God's going to be with us no matter what happens. We know that the Lord of heaven's armies doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. Uh, His Mm. word is constant. He's an anchor for our souls. So no matter what comes at us in 2024, we can know that the Lord of heaven's armies doesn't change. And Mm. I am so thankful, uh, Dr. Mark, for uh, the gift of Dr. Mark Sherwood and what God is doing through you guys here at the show. Thank you for being such a huge part of this podcast in 2023. I can't wait to see what God does in the new year and uh, have some more of that kingdom candy. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. We're excited about that. And people can reach out to us. Keep us in your prayers. And I look forward to these so much. And it's been a it's been a great year. 2023 has been amazing. Lots of great connections on here. And um, and I'm excited, too. So just honored, honored, honored to be a part of what you got going. It's great. Well, the honor is mine. Thank you so much for coming on the show, my friend. I'll see you next year. Sounds great. You guys want more information on my guest today, or if you'd like to reach out to us, you can do that by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. Uh, you know now, by now, that Dr. Mark Sherwood's available to take those questions, and there really isn't a question uh, that we won't jump into, as you guys have heard. So uh, send those to us. We'd love we'd love to answer those questions, and it's just a delight to be able to do that. Also, you can reach out to Dr. Mark personally by going to his website, Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. I hope you guys have a great day wherever you're at. Thank you for listening to the show and I will see you right back here again at the intersection of faith and culture.